Welcome to the two-year anniversary episode of Behind the Picture. I am so, so excited about this episode. This week's Behind the Picture, we'll be talking about the power of creative angles in photography. We're going to be discussing the importance of finding creative angles in your photography, as well as exploring photographers who have mastered the art of finding the perfect angle. We'll be diving in deep into different ways that you guys can experiment with angles to create unique photography. Plus, we'll be reviewing your photos, of course, and discussing this month's theme and mini challenge. It is the two-year anniversary episode, guys. I've been doing this podcast. I've been doing Behind the Picture for two years. February the 15th. 2021 was the first episode of Behind the Picture. I started streaming this show on Twitch and I started getting some good traffic relatively quickly. So ah, year one was amazing. Year two, the end of year two, I moved my streams from Twitch to YouTube. I got to tell you the smartest thing I've ever done since November. We've probably gained over 200 subscribers and have really expanded this community. I'm able to get the information that I'm putting out here weekly, three times a week, by the way, to more people. And the discoverability on YouTube, I think, has been super, super helpful. Today, we are talking all about angles in photography and in life. Every aspect of your life, we need to talk about angles and new angles. In this week's inspiration, I'm going to show you some photographers that have an amazing perspective with their use of angles, of course, in their photography. And I'll be checking their websites and talking to you guys about how each photographer showcases their work, what their websites look like. Again, new perspectives are not just about angles with your camera. It's always it's also about shifting your headspace. We're going to be talking later about a new blog platform that smart photographers are going to start taking advantage of. I'm going to showcase one already, a photographer that has this this platform on lock. Her name is Lucy Lumen. And funny enough, I found her right here on YouTube. I have an action packed show for you guys today. Action packed. Let's get into it. I'm super excited. Let's get into a little bit of this week's inspiration. All right. Let's talk about some photographers that inspire creative angles. First photographer up is Mandy Barker. Now, if you want to talk about inspiration, have a look at this website. When I found this website yesterday, when I was starting to do my show prep, tell me I wasn't just absolutely blown away. And when we get into the work, when we get into these galleries, uh, uh, You'll see, you're gonna see for yourself just how incredible this photography is. Mandy Barker. These, yes, are, this is a flesh-footed shearwater. Dignity and death after ingesting marine plastic pollution, Lord Hope, Australia. This is dignity and death after ingesting marine plastic. This photographer is double exposing <sighs> birds that have died from eating marine plastic 
with um, reflections, with watercolors. It looks, it, it really, <laughs> Photographer One just hits home because I know I have so many wildlife, so many nature lovers that watch me. This must be hard to look at, but when we're talking about the power of creative angles, we can't do that without showing incredibly powerful photography. That's Mandy Barker's first gallery. Let's have a look at something that is a little bit different. Now, these explosions are so incredible. This is a composite. It's called Penalty the World. 769 Marie Debris footballs and pieces of collected from 41 countries and islands around the world from 144 different beaches and by 89 members of the public in just four months. This is pollution. What an absolutely incredible use of perspective. Yes or yes. And also a message. This is the whole point about today's episode. It's all about the power of creative angles, the power of having a take, taking a stand with your photography. I hope this moves you like it moves me. I put together, I think, a beautiful selection of photographers to look at today that are really <sighs> causing waves with their ideas and their photography. That is photographer Mandy Barker. The next photographer on our list, if you guys have ever watched Discovery Network, you've seen a show called Deadliest Catch. The Deadliest Catch has a photographer that documents all the work for the Deadliest Catch, and that photographer's name is Corey Richards. His work is absolutely mind-bending. Let's get into the work of Corey Richards. Welcome, everybody who's popping in in chat. Thank you so much. Guys, if you're watching this after the fact, know that you can view the live chat after and follow along on all the people who are hanging out with us while we look at these amazing photographers. This is the work of Corey Richards. Really, really, really strong. And again, I wanted to share a range of different photographers, a range of different types of photography, all along the lines of perspective. You can see that Corey Richards' perspective is unique, fresh, and incredibly powerful and iconic. Corey Richards. Let's look at one of his... Oh my goodness, are we not able to see... I would like to see Deadliest Catch. Portraiture Editorial. I see a naked man. That is Alex Honnell, who is a world-famous free climber. We are still looking at the work of Corey Richards. Whoa. Very, very clever, very powerful. There's lots of members. So we are going to switch to our next incredible photographer. His name is Jonathan Kelso. Jonathan Kelso, I discovered this photographer's work yesterday. And I have to tell you, 
very, very powerful photography from this photographer based in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's have a look at the work of Jonathan Kelso. La baby, Lil Baby. Again, a very interesting perspective. It's it's unique and fresh. Welcome, Andy. Welcome, 44 Games. Welcome, Julie. Welcome, my man, Original Exotic. Welcome, 44 Games. Welcome, Vicky. Welcome, Father Howie. Wow. Wow. Incredible, incredibly powerful photography from Atlanta photographer Jonathan Kelso. We are celebrating my two-year anniversary doing this photography stream. I hope you guys are enjoying my content and have enjoyed my content over the last couple of years. Comments are definitely welcome regarding my progress today. Oh, look at this photograph. Incredible. Incredible. Jonathan Kelso. And again, something that I wanted to bring to you on our perspective episode during perspective month i hope you guys are feeling it and feeling me today we got an amazing episode planned we're action-packed today we're jamming it full of content jonathan kelso let's look at the cold case project Really honest, heartfelt photographs. And stories. Wow. Wow. Jonathan Kelso. That is... I believe our third photographer that we're looking at. Gavin Go is a <sighs> Let's just look. I don't I don't know how to describe him. He's a documentary travel photographer that has such a unique perspective. So let's choose a gallery from Nepal earthquake looks incredibly incredibly powerful. When I look at photographers, I'm always thinking about my viewers and the type of work that they create. I'm always trying to put together a collection of work and find websites that showcase work in a really powerful way. I really feel like this layout is incredibly powerful and incredibly effective for showing these stories. As you can see, it shows the work incredibly large. The photography is the focus and there is beautiful narration in between each picture. Gavin Go, or Gao, or Goff, <laughs> or Goff. I'm not sure the pronunciation. Hope you guys are enjoying the selection of photographs I put together today. Each week I'm trying to show you new photographers that just bend your brain and inspire, as well as websites. Websites and how photography is showcased in 2023 is incredibly important. Incredibly important. I just recently did a huge push on my website. I'm very excited to show you guys today my progress. That is Gavin Goff. Gavin, I would call a documentary photographer. He really made me think of Mark Fox. Um, so I had to share. Let's see if we can find another story from Gavin that really feels... Um, Nomadic life in Mongolia. Let's look at this story, yeah? Again, big pictures. Very clever use of space. 
wide angle portraits, which is a great angle because of course what we're talking about this month is all about new fresh angles. Look at that photo. Look at that photo. Leave a comment if you guys are feeling up the work. Leave a comment. Understand the more comments and activity that I have in chat, the more people that this stream will get pushed out to, the more comments that I have, the more activity that I have in chat, the more likes on this live stream, the more people that will see it. So your engagement is important to me. I'm up for any questions as well. This is photography by Gavin Goff. All right, let's look at a photographer that by now you should all know, but her unique perspective during the time that she was alive. You guys know I'm talking about Vivian Meyer. Vivian Mayer, her photography just recently discovered has influenced a whole era of new people getting into photography, new people shooting street photography. Vivian Mayer or Vivian Meyer, I guess Meyer as well, was an American born photographer. She was a nanny and she created all of these photographs in secret. And she was discovered after her death with many storage units and rooms full to the brim with negatives. It took one curator who bought her box, one storage room of negatives for $300 to start bringing Vivian Meyer's work to life. Since then, this curator has put together all of these websites, exhibits, and books all around the world. This is the work of gone but not forgotten photographer Vivian Meyer. Leave a comment in chat if you guys love the work of Vivian Meyer. I do believe she shot with a Rolleiflex. Vivian Meyer. And the last photographer that I have to share with you guys today is Ryan Longnecker. <laughs> Ryan Longnecker. What a great name. Ryan Longnecker. And Ryan has a cool site and a cooler perspective on photography, on angles. I really enjoyed looking through this shooter's work. And although he doesn't show his photographs as large as I would like on his website, he does have a very interesting take on photography he has a very interesting take on angles and perspectives and I really enjoyed looking through his collections I really loved his use of color and also it's almost like a film lo-fi kind of feeling with some of his photography so take in the work of Ryan Longnecker and let me know your thoughts. We will look at one more gallery from Ryan. We will look at Iceland. Because it's a place that I've always wanted to travel. We're looking at the work of Ryan Longnecker. It is perspective month right here on my photography stream and I share photo challenges with you weekly to help you guys level up, get out of your comfort zone and push your photography to the next level. I have a Discord server that you guys can join where I am growing a community of photographers and creatives that talk, share, and also it's the place where we look at work when you're trying to submit for my show. So please consider joining the Discord. If you're um, 
not of the Discord generation. It's very easy. You just click the invite. Obviously, you're going to need to create a Discord account. But once you do and join my server, you will be able to participate and share work during my live shows. All right, let's get into section next. Section next. Section next. All right. Got it. All right. Hope you guys are having a good day. Hope you guys are enjoying the afternoon here with me. All right. At the core of creating great photography is creating great angles. Great creative angles for our pictures. No matter what we're shooting, whether we're shooting landscapes, portraits, or still lifes, there's always something new and interesting when it comes to trying a interesting angle to your shot. You've heard me speak a lot about your style, your visual signature, and I've spoken a lot about editorial rules for shooting for magazines, but it's important to also try all kinds of new things. The only way that we can push our work into new areas if we tr is if we try new things, if we put ourselves out of our comfort zone. Instead of sticking to the usual stuff, why not try to think outside the box a little bit with your photography this year? Get down low, climb high, experiment, shoot from behind, get creative with reflections. The possibilities, obviously, are endless. You never know what you'll come up with until you try, guys. Um, please don't be afraid to experiment. This whole month in this whole show is all about experimenting and having fun with photography. It's important that we experiment. It's important that we have fun with our photography. And I promise you, if you do these challenges that I set out for you, the work that you're going to create by doing a challenge for me, the work that you're creating is for you. It really has nothing to do for, with me. I'm just your coach, your motivator, your inspirer. So um, I hope you guys are feeling the format of this show. I recently went out with my 16 millimeter lens and my R5 and created some new content. Um, I have to share this amazing new blogging platform which is a game changer for photographers and some new things that I've done to my website that you guys should also be doing to your website. But before that, grab a tea, which I hope you have already, and watch this with me. I've been waiting for the perfect conditions to go out and use this new 16 millimeter lens that I just picked up for my R5. But it's Canadian winter and every day is cold, gray. I decided to just go out. I know it's night, but I know my R5 is amazing at night and despite the cold, I decided to just soldier it. What I love about the R5 is the tonal range and how this camera handles low light. Unfortunately, the GoPro I'm shooting with does not handle low light with the same capability that the R5 does. I can't film and shoot with my R5, so I wanted to almost do a test to see how the GoPro handled me shooting at night. The GoPro is amazing for so many conditions, but shooting at night is not one of them. I did consider showing just slides with music, but 
I really thought it might be a little bit more engaging for you to see just a little bit of the behind the scenes of me walking around and looking for these photographs. I really like going out with just one focal length, which is, by the way, this is how I do street photography. I'm a portrait photographer mostly, but when I'm going out to just shoot, whether I'm shooting street portraits or doing street photography, I only bring one lens. So I think I'm gonna make a series of videos on these one lens walks that I do. So we'll call this the first one. This is a one lens walk with my 16 millimeter. I definitely will be going out during the day with this lens, but I thought I'd make a short video just because I went out, I was recording, I wanted to test how this GoPro would handle night. Why not share it with you guys? You can see how amazing this camera lens combination handles night, handles low light. It's kind of incredible actually. It's perspective month on my channel. I give monthly challenges to my viewers, so this month's challenges are all surrounding perspectives and new perspectives, so I had to buy a lens to, you know, give myself some new perspective. I accidentally tapped my GoPro and it flipped over, so I apologize for that shot. You can see the GoPro gets a little bit noisy. It doesn't stabilize well at night. I had to really test it and seeing how I get these shots and seeing what it looks like a little bit more in real life, I think is adding to the story. I stumbled across this encampment in front of this church, which was incredibly difficult to look at. Many people haven't recovered from COVID and the lockdowns. This fire station, I had to stop. I missed it. And this window. I loved the depth of field, but this lady was not happy. The camera gets a little crazy here with the digitizing, but I really did love that church. Because of the hyperlapse accident earlier, there was some amazing photographs that I missed catching on video, but I'm going to include them at the end. I'm glad I caught this woman walking by. She was wearing the right outfit and didn't get hit by a car. This is the stuff I didn't catch on video. If you guys like this kind of content, please consider dropping it a like. I just decided I had to go out tonight. I was getting tired of being cooped up at my desk, so I decided to make this for you. If you guys like it, please tap the like button and subscribing is cool if you want more of my smiling face. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That is my latest video on YouTube. That dropped yesterday. I spent 24 hours awake during the time of making that video. I felt some inspiration. I needed to go out and make a... Uh, some content with my 16 millimeter lens. I hadn't shot photographs with that lens yet. So I couldn't go out during the day because of work and stuff. So I just had to go out at night. Hope you guys enjoyed that little piece of content. Um, I like how that came together. Um, let's get into a little bit of, I guess we'll call it the breakdown. 
I found some new angles for you to share your work and build your community. I've put a ton of work into my website over the last few days. And I hope you guys, I really hope you guys like what my site looks like now. I am going to share with you my new site. Been working on this for quite a while. Um, you guys see, I don't mess around when it comes to changing my site. You remember how, I mean, Thursday, it did not look like this. But right now, it is looking pretty, pretty slick with new work on my main portfolio, new design with my a little bit of new design with my layout i've changed my nav and made my navigation much cleaner all of my galleries are looking i believe really good i thank you julie julie says she loves the feel of the new website thank you i'm a really not like I'm searching for compliments, but it definitely, it definitely helps me when I get feedback regarding all things. This is my classics section, formerly archive. I changed my rollovers. I made text larger all over. Now, there's some key things here that I want you guys to notice that I added that I'm going to go through all of these new features that I put into my website, but I believe that you need to do with your website today. Like if you have a website, you need to start doing the stuff that I've incorporated with my website. You need to start doing it right now. First of all, I'm trying to make my photographs bigger. So I've gone through and created a unified look to my thumbnails. I've created a unified look to pretty much everything that's here on my site. I've also added some new work this is the new work that you guys remember me shooting for algoma university i've put this together in such a way that you get to see my tear sheets as well as the photographs that they chose so if you look at it this way you get to see it um my original and how they used it which I think is kind of interesting as a way to show portfolio work. So again, this is stuff that I think that you guys should be incorporating into your own personal websites and portfolios. The next thing that I added, which I think that you guys need to do immediately, is create a mailing list. This is something that I've been needing to do this for so long. And finally, I've done this. My suggestion for all of you, join a, an email service like MailChimp, which is what I use. It's free, but there's constant contact. There's a bunch of different services that you can start with a free list and then as you get over like a thousand contacts that's when it starts when you start have, having to pay the next thing that i'm doing with this mailing list is i'm not adding anybody manually i'm using this just for acquisition when you click this join my mailing list what happens is it pops up an, a completely new website which gives you join my mailing list you can put in your email your first name and join and basically that grabs your address and adds it to mailchimp everything that i'm doing right here is using the free service 
once you start collecting addresses, and I also know when someone joins my mailing list from here, from my website, it makes it really easy because it puts them into a category. So we need to be collecting people that we can then later market to. If you have somebody who's saying, yes, I want to be notified when you do new things and they say, yes, put me on your mailing list. Those are people that you should be happy and feel good about sending correspondence to, updating them on what you're doing, updating them on what you're shooting. So the first thing that I did was I added a mailing list. Next, I needed and need a blog platform. I wanted to have a blog on my site, but there was just, with my particular Adobe portfolio, I didn't, like, how my blog looked before just wasn't cool enough. Now, I found a creator, her name's Lucy Lumen, and I found Lucy through YouTube which is kind of crazy. Like I was just browsing YouTube and I found one of her videos and then I found her blog. And that is what hooked me. This girl is a film photographer and I want you to look at her blog. Now I'm not a paid subscriber, which is a very key thing because this blog platform allows you to see, to have both paid and free subscribers. This is what one of her posts look like. And it basically, she sells a, an e-zine. She sells like, it's basically a private, community of people who are fans of your photography. So many people are using this as an alternative to Patreon. And I want you to think about that as a creative. You can use this as an alternative to Patreon. Let's have a look at this next story. Obviously, you can click all the photos and scroll through and just look at the photos. But looking at it in a blog format, I think is really kind of cool. So, and also she's got little tags for her Instagram and blah, blah, blah. So let me show you what I did. I started my own and it is called A Life Behind the Camera. And when you click from my website to A Life Behind the Camera, this is the very beginnings of it because I just started this yesterday. But this is my first post. And this is what my posts will look like on my blog and what I'm using my blog for. My goal with this is to have a place that's basically better for me than Instagram. It showcases my photography in a way that I feel is better than Instagram. And it allows me to just have a little bit more narrative, give a little bit more to my posts than I would within social media. Um, it allows me to share a great an infinite amount of photography. And my goal for this space personally is to have tips, tricks, insights, photo breakdowns, photo shoot breakdowns for my own personal photo shoots. All the th And again, as you can see, I'm starting off strong. I'm going to be making at least one post like this per week. Subscribing will allow you to be notified every time I put content up here. But if you choose to pay, you're going to have access to 
all of the archives. Um, as a free subscriber, you only get to see really the, the latest post, but I'm going to be populating this and turning it into my own personal online magazine style space. And I'm super excited about it. And in subscribing for free, you're going to get tons of content. But if you choose to pay as a subscriber, number one, not only are you helping me continue to keep this machine going, I'm using this as like a sister sort of thing to behind the picture. And for the first little while, I'm going to be maintaining my own personal blog here on Substack. But as the month goes on and into March, I'm going to be creating a Substack for my photo streams. And essentially, these interviews that I do with Fiona Lark, there's transcripts and photos, and I'm going to be turning those into essentially a behind the picture magazine for real. And we're going to be showcasing you all photographers, everybody who submits, people who submit work, people who win photo of the week, all of this is going to be in behind the picture magazine. As promised, we're in year three, and I've been looking for the right format to create Behind the Picture magazine. And I think that using Substack and having it behind some sort of uh, paywall will make it, again, another avenue um, and a resource. So if you are choosing to pay $5 a month to see and read behind the picture magazine, it's going to be for my photo streams, really like the partner show. There's going to be way more stuff there and way more free stuff there than on Discord. Discord's going to have some stuff there as well, but I'm trying to have Discord work for certain things, but this blog and this behind the picture magazine work for other things as well and really give you guys an incentive to submit photographs knowing that that work that you submit may be selected to be put into a curated section on behind the picture the magazine and of course with links back to you and links to your social media and your website and everything so i'm incredibly excited it's going to be a great sidecar to my YouTube channel. And this whole vibe is about innovation, not imitation. I'm trying to do something revolutionary with Behind the Picture, with Ask a Photo Pro, with these photo streams. I'm really trying to do something new, something that nobody's doing. And I hope you guys are feeling it. I hope you guys are feeling it. I stayed up for 24 hours straight, by the way, to make that video and to put out that content. So I hope you guys are feeling it. You call yourself a photographer. Look how you're dressed. Yes, you. You just wear track pants, t-shirt. If you're gonna wear track pants and a t-shirt, at least look fly like me. Here, take this. Right? How fly do you look now? If you guys want to get the flyest apparel for creatives and photographers, you got to tune into that merch store. There it is. Look at, I have over a hundred items spread between two merch stores, limited edition drops. Every video that you watch on YouTube, as well as on all my channel pages, you'll see the links for my merch store. Make sure that you guys jump in there and look lie like I do when you're shooting. Let's get it on. So of course you guys know that this month we are talking all about new perspectives, perspectives with your photography. It is all about you guys getting out of your comfort zone and just trying new things. Thank you for watching my merch store spot. Know that merch makes you look dope and fly. 
and super clean while you're doing creative things. So know that anything that you purchase supports the stream, keeps this thing going. I'm giving you multiple ways for you to support the stream. And if you buy something and take some photos, you can be featured right there on my merch store. So because I am not monetized yet, I'm almost there. I'm probably about three months away from monetizing. I don't have super chats. Um, if you guys learned something today or inspired by what I'm sharing with you. And if you find something today that has helped you, you can drop me a dollar or two simply by hitting the tip link in the description of the video that you're watching right now or typing command tip in chat. Donations are never necessary, but appreciated. Obviously, as I'm on my journey to affiliate, I do all of this on YouTube for free. I appreciate you guys all. If you like photography or love photography, if you're obsessed about photography like I am, please consider hitting the subscribe button and participate. You guys talking in chat, talking to each other, sharing work, getting each other's contact information, this kind of stuff you guys can do on Discord. We have an amazing introduction section where you guys get to meet each other, share your links and chat amongst yourselves. It's kind of cool. That's how we do it here. Are you guys ready for the smoke? Are you ready for the smoke? I did go out recently and make some photographs really for you. I mean, when I go out and make these snaps, I'm actually shooting for you. I'm always trying to inspire and going out with this 16 millimeter, it, it's, I needed to go outside and make photographs. I needed to. It was as necessary as I would say my next breath, my last breath, my most recent breath. <laughs> and I feel really good about the work that I created in this context. And I hope it's inspiring. I call this type of photography the most difficult that I do. Going out and shooting when I don't have a subject is the hardest kind of photography for me. But shooting photos without a subject is also the most sellable photography because you shoot portraits people aren't interested in necessarily buying a portrait unless they have some sort of a connection to the person in that frame but buying a photograph of anonymous people or scenes definitely has purchasability and I'm learning how to make those types of photographs better. And I hope that me going out and me putting myself out of my comfort zone inspires you to do the same. Know that this type of photography is the hardest kinds of pictures that I make. I find this the hardest. I find this the hardest. But I went out and I did it. And I hope that you guys feel it. I hope that you guys feel the work and feel the effort and are also inspired to go and try to put yourself into conditions that make you feel um, all strange inside. I hope you guys do as well. 
honestly, it's something that is good for you. It's good for you to be in a place of like <gasps> that feeling. That's a good feeling. And don't don't be afraid of that feeling, that anxious, those butterflies. If you continually put yourself into the scenario where <gasps> you're feeling those butterflies, it usually means that you're going in the right direction. Like, don't run away from that, you know? You gotta walk towards that feeling, not run away from it. It's important. All right, let's get us into your favorite part of this episode and every episode that I do, that part of the episode where I review your photos. Let's get into some real photo reviews. I hope you guys think that my photos review, my photo reviews bring value. If you guys have never seen me review photographs from my viewers, um, I hope you guys enjoy what you are about to watch. It's easy to submit. Again, all you need to do is join my Discord. I do have a photo drop, a photo bomb. I have several different ways for you to share photographs. And the first photographer we are looking at today comes to us all the way from Australia via India. You guys know him as Dev. We call him Devanshu Damali. This is new work from Dev. Let's go. Let's go. I have photographers who watch and submit from all over the world and nothing gets me more hype than looking at photography from photographers that are inspired. You can see how inspired Devonshu is as a creator. Look at the light, look at the water, look at the sky. Look at the power of this photo. Dev, this is pure heat. I hope you guys are feeling this is Devon Shoe's first photo. Dev, this is amazing. Well played, Devon Shoe. Let's go. Let's see Dev's next photo, shall we? Again, if you want to submit photographs for review, you need to use the discord link which you'll see in the description of the video you're watching and every video that you watch devon shoes second picture the tonal range and the textures that we're getting here dev is really great i'm loving this layering that you have going on and this sky effect the look of film is amazing dev really has his post-production look on lock and his skin tone is amazing. The sky is amazing. Dev, this is an absolute, absolute win. I'm very happy with the work you chose to submit today. Let's go. Dev's second photograph, nothing but the heat. Nothing but the heat, people. Hope you guys are feeling it. Hope you guys agree. We have another photograph from Dev. Let's go. Dev is really getting his stride. Have a look at this picture here. This is absolutely beautiful. Let's look at it as a cover. It's definitely grabby. Definitely stops you in your tracks, Dev. This is fantastic. Another banger from Devon Shoe. This is incredible, incredible. Let's look at another. Wow, this motion photograph is great. 
really great motion dev i really enjoy looking at this picture the motion in the hair is amazing the motion in the water the footprints here this leading line which is pushing you into this photo the clouds everything about this photo wins dev this is really really special this is a great set from Devon Shu. Let's see to make sure that I'm not missing any photographs. This is four photos from Dev. Let's have a look at them again, starting from photo number one, number two, three, and four. And Dev, if I had to pick a single photo that was my absolute wow. If I had to choose just one, well, for me, that photo is this one right here. This is your absolute, I feel your best photo. This is your gold. I absolutely love the body lines i love the water i love the texture this is what i would call your best i love this picture i'm giving it the cardi seal of approval i hope you guys agree that is some new work from devon shoe all the way from australia Hope you guys enjoy. That is photographer submission number one. It sets the tone and gives you guys a headspace as to the type of photographers that submit and where they're from. Let's have a look at another one of my viewers. His name is Turtle and Turtle, it looks like has created a droney He's a drone photographer, photographer, photographer. Look at this photograph from Turtle. Let's go. That looks cold, Turtle. Cold, cold, cold. You look cold, my guy. The snow is great. The snow is great. What I would like to see, I guess, oops, just a little bit different from the snow is the detail that's where here and a little bit into here a little bit in here and here anywhere where it gets the brightest um you need to bring back um with highlights so you bring back your highlights into the negative if you move your highlight slider that way in lightroom probably around minus 40 to minus 60, you'll start to recover in here and in here and get some of those highlights back. And also your skin tone, because the skin on your arm and here, we start to lose a little bit and we get a little bit of blue in your shadows. That blue can be corrected easily in color balancing. Other than that, I think this is a banging photo. You can see that your exposure is for your shadows. When you're exposing for your shadows, what happens is we lose highlights. You can't, um, we can't have both, right? So um, because we lose the highlights when we expose for the shadows, there's like a sweet spot. Know that you're including black and white in one shot and it's mostly white so because it's mostly white it becomes like tricky for the camera to reconcile this exposure because of the contrast the light is incredibly hard from that side the best way to get this kind of a photo is noon
when the sun is at the highest, it's going to come straight down and that's going to eliminate these long shadows and it's actually going to make it have less contrast when you're doing a top down photo. Yeah. All right. That is the man they call turtle and a little bit of photo inspiration. I hope you guys are feeling total turtles, total, total turtles drony. All right. Let's see what else we got here in the discord guys. Hope you guys are having a good day. Hope you guys are enjoying the stream. I have a brother. His name is Leslie. He is a painter, an artist. And he also is the best car painter in North America. He's an incredible photorealistic artist. Right now he's sharing some behind the scenes on a painting he's working on. Les says, what's on my table today? Working on my final clean drawing, rough then clean, rough and now final clean, then onto canvas and paper for my two final finished artworks, um, one in pencil and one painted. This is my mother. This is a photograph that my brother made of my mom when he was here in Toronto City. And this is my brother working through the process of creating this almost 3D looking photorealistic drawing of her. This is Les Cardi and his artwork. He is bananas. He's bananas. And my brother is eight years older than me. Understand my brother's been painting like this since I was born. My brother has been this talented as long as I've been conscious. And the reason that I'm a photographer is because I have a brother that is as creative as this and can make work that looks this way. Les Cardi, everybody. This is currently what he is working on. Pretty amazing, yeah? Pretty amazing, right? Comments are welcome. Keep in mind, comments propel this stream. The more comments and likes this video gets, the more people who get to see it. So your likes are definitely appreciated. This is another one from Brother Les. And it's great to see it um, almost like happening live. It's pretty cool, right? Thanks for this amazing POV perspective, Les. It's a perfect, it's a perfect, um, it's a perfect time to submit these photos. Thank you. Thank you for submitting that, Les. This is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All right. And some more photographs from my brother. This one is called Tumbleweed in the River. This one is a zoomed in iPhone or zoomed in Android phone photo less. You can see how when you do hyper zooms, what happens is it gets digital because you're not using the whole sensor. You're just using part of the sensor. If you imagine your phone sensor is already microscopic, but if you enlarge that microscopic version like this and then zoom in you're now using only a part of that larger frame and what happens is we get like a muddy digital kind of mess so this is one of those ones where you pushed your zoom way too far my suggestion when you're using phone cameras is zoom with your feet move with your feet because I promise you that zoom is not going to look like what you think it will. And I'll show you, he's about to show me the full photograph here. And you can see how far in he was punching in. Les was just literally giving us this, that crop. And if you think of this entire thing as your sensor, and also keep in mind that this sensor is like half a centimeter. It's literally like 0.5 centimeters or like five millimeters. 
you're using like one millimeter or less when you crop that. And that's the reason that it looks like that. The whole photo, bro, is amazing. Tonal range. I love these bands that you have here. This texture that you have here, the texture that you have here is all great. This is a phone photo, but as a phone photo, it really has some real great depth of field and some great detail up in here. I wish that you pushed down a little bit in order to highlight what's happening up here just a little bit more. Yes, what's happening here is interesting, but you could afford to cut it right here in order to give me that much more space up here and to push this band a little bit further down. But overall, my brother, this is a great, great photo. Let's go. And for a man who doesn't make a living at photography, who just uses photography as a tool to make your paintings better, I think you're a pretty great photographer, my brother. Thank you so much for submitting. That's Les Cardi. All right. Let's look at some weekly challenges. Do we have anything there? We do not. Where else would there be some photographs? Um, where else would there be some photos? Do let me know if you're planning to still squeeze in some photographs today. Just having a look at what we have up in here. It looks like I'm pretty, pretty much caught up with all the photographs that have been submitted. So I'm going to put the pen down. You sent in Raw's turtle. I appreciate that. The raw file processing. We are going to save for Tuesday's show. Tuesday, Thursdays are the days that I think raw processing will be served the best. Those are the days that I think ask a photo pro days when I can chill and have like, and not just not feel like a pressure to rush and get my episodes under a certain time frame. So to review what we went over today, I feel like we all need to be having a new take and a new perspective on our work, as well as how we choose to showcase our work. I've decided to take on another sign up, take on another platform, but because I believe that this new platform is going to be something that will really enhance the experience of looking at my photography beyond just my website. I believe that having a blog, having a way that you can expand a little bit more with your photography stories is necessary. And having that in either a different area on your website or having it as its own site entirely like I'm doing has the ability to create a new audience in a different place. So the reason I've chosen Substack is because I feel like this is a platform on the rise and it's a platform that photographers are going to be starting to use pretty much today. As soon as you've watched this video, you should be going and signing up for Substack, subscribing to my Substack, and exploring, seeing what creators are doing there and getting yourself into the headspace as new places to put your photography beyond Instagram. I hope you guys agree. All right, all right, all right. Okay, and as far as the website, please let me know what you guys think of my website. Please take a moment to subscribe to my Substack. If you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one consulting, I have really started doing these for people. People have started to hire me to do one-on-one -on -one portfolio reviews and 
the feedback from these one-on-one -on -one intensive portfolio reviews seem to be very positive. So if you guys are interested in having your portfolio reviewed, interested in help with direction, where you're going with your photography as a whole, as an entire body of work, let me help you. I promise you it's going to get you back on track if you feel a little bit derailed. My photography shows in these challenges help as well, but as I've noticed over the course of the year, January, February are hard months for photographers to stay creative, to stay motivated. It's hard for me as well to stay motivated during January, February, but out of the darkness, there comes a great light. And you know, after February comes March. And in March, spring comes. So we are almost at spring. We're almost at summer. I'm trying to help you and get you guys enabled with the right tools. So as you get into nicer weather, more time outside, more time shooting, you have a sick website, you have an amazing blog platform, you have the right gear, and you're inspired to do the work. I'm trying to do it during the darkest, hardest time, which is February, Black History Month. It's also the two year anniversary of this show, and I need to stay motivated to keep this going for another year two years, three years, five years, and you guys, my viewers, whether you're able to watch my shows live or watching them after, if you've made it to this point in the video, maybe leave a comment how my streams have helped you with your photography during your photography journey. Know that that's my only goal is to help you level up your photography. So if I've helped you in any way, Leave a comment on the video that you're watching right now and let me know how I've helped you. That would help me greatly. If you guys like, thank you, Les, I appreciate you. Thank you for that compliment. My brother says that my site looks great on mobile as well. Thank you, brother, I appreciate that. You guys can help me by um, joining my Substack, subscribing to my Substack. Also, everybody who's watching, you need to go to stevecardi.com and join my mailing list. Like you actually, if you're watching this, if you're in my discord, like where, however we communicate, if you're not on my mailing list, I'm not able to send you correspondence. So if you've got to this point in the video, join my mailing list so I can keep you updated with everything that I'm doing. And I promise you, the content that you're going to be getting from joining my mailing list is going to be worth the price of the free admission. And if you choose to support and give me $5 a month, I promise you for your $5 a month, you're going to be getting like a magazine subscription. And it's going to be something that we're rolling behind the picture into a website on this Substack platform. So join Substack because you might have your work on that if you're a regular contributor to this show. That's about it, guys. I hope you guys like my smiling face. If you do, again, please hit that like button. Comments and likes keep this whole thing going. If you like today's stream, if you like the things that I'm sharing with you, please, please, please tell a friend. It's definitely how we get this stream out to more people. I've been giving mini challenges every week, and this week is no different. But I really need you guys to be thinking about all the assignments that you haven't done so far, all these challenges that you haven't done yet this season. It's February, halfway through the month. So 
you guys have lots of stuff to do, lots of stuff to shoot, and lots of challenges to catch up on. But if you want another one, this week's challenge is we are talking about the power of creative angles. Last week's challenge was create 100 photographs of the same person, place, or thing from every possible angle. Then share with me your first photograph, share with me your 100th photograph, and then share which whatever photograph between one and 100 was your favorite, and then tell us what the number of that photograph was. Nobody has done that challenge as yet, Know that that challenge is going to make you a better photographer, but you have to do the challenge. You have to do the challenge. 100 photographs, one subject, whether it's a person, place, or a thing, and shoot it from 100 different angles. Submit your first photograph, submit your last photograph, and your favorite photograph, but tell us what number that is. That is a current challenge. And a challenge on top of that is this week's challenge, which is the power of creative angles. I would like you to photograph a person, place, or thing and make that person, place, or thing feel powerful. This week's perspective mini challenge is all about power. Show power through your incredible angles with your photography. That is all. Submit three to five photographs in your weekly challenge drop in my Discord. If you guys have any questions about that, you can ask me in the Discord or ask me here in comments of this video. That is it, my friends. That is it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. As all YouTubers say, if you've made it this far, make sure you tap the like button six times. Make sure you've subscribed nine times. And make sure you've told all your family, friends, and relatives. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you. We'll see you on the next one.